Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome American Telemedicine Association President, Dr. Peter Yellowlees. Well, it's really lovely to be here, and thank you for whoever said smile. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's such an honor to be here as your president, um, to have worked uh, in the association for many years, um, and to have uh, developed so many friends and, and relationships with all of you. And I, I want to start off today by really thanking all of you for everything that you've done, both for the industry, uh, for patients, uh, clearly for the ATA as well. We have a very uh, large group of committed people in this association, and it's just wonderful to be here in, in Chicago. So why don't you all give yourselves a big clap? <laughs> So it's really amazing being here on the 25th anniversary. Um, ATA was actually started in 1993. I saw the first patient I ever interviewed on, uh, on video in 1991. So that's two years before ATA was founded. So I'm not going to tell you my age. Um, but uh, just as a comparison, um, I got a grant to buy the technology to see uh, some patients initially. Back in 1991, um, I actually had to pay 170,000 to buy a single video conferencing box. Compare that now with your phone, which can do a lot more. Uh, so in those days, life was very different. Um, and it was all about um, getting access to care for people in isolated areas around the world. Um, and we've changed enormously over the last 25 years. We've grown with the healthcare system. We have uh, really sort of moved forward, and, we, and we've continued to be the innovators in much of the industry. And so what I believe now is that whilst we still clearly have to focus on access, what we should really be focusing on is how do we provide better quality care, and how do we lead the rest of the health industry uh, from a clinical point of view and show how virtual care really can be better for patients than uh, the traditional purely in-person approach. And that's my main message to you today. Think about uh, us providing virtual care. Think about providing it better than in the traditional approach. So ADA is actually a remarkably well-organized association. We have a strategic plan. Um, I'm sure you haven't all read it, but hopefully many of you will download it after the conference. And, and there are three main components to the strategic plan. The first is, is championing value, promoting evidence, developing standards, uh, and demonstrating solutions and models of care. So basically trying to prove to the rest of the industry what works. It's the how of, of telemedicine. And so let me give you a few examples of this and of what's happened over the years and, and where we've come to. Now, um, Kaiser is an amazing example of how they have effectively introduced uh, the, the whole concept of virtual care. I actually get my own care for uh, some medical problems through Kaiser. Um, and, and at Kaiser, I can go online and I can schedule my appointments, I can get all my prescriptions, um, and I can make appointments to, to see my primary care doc either in person or uh, uh, on, uh, on the phone or on video. And to prove it to you, you actually, I want to introduce my own primary care physician, Dr. Peter Ash. Uh, this was a picture I took uh, of a consultation I had with Peter just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and that was done on our mobile phones. So this is an astonishing change. Um, and uh, Bernard Tyson, the CEO of Kai's, was recently quoted as saying, but more than half of all the, the clinical consultations done by Kaiser physicians direct to their patients were now done electronically. That is extraordinary. And that's a real message for all the rest of us. Now, one of the key things that I think I like to talk about is this whole issue of, of being a hybrid practitioner, of practicing both using virtual care technologies and telemedicine and in person. And, and certainly that's what I do personally. And I think that, again, is a model that is a very big philosophical change from the early days of telemedicine, 
where we also talked about seeing patients either on video or in person. We no longer do that. So we're practicing in this hybrid model. And certainly if a patient comes to see me now in the clinic at, uh, at UC Davis, they can choose um, between seeing me in person or on video. Uh, and that video now is typically straight to their home. So what's the evidence base? Let's just briefly look at the technologies. I, really, I think of technologies really in two different ways. There's a group of base technologies, and then there's a group of emergent technologies. The base technologies are the ones where we really have strong evidence to use these in everyday clinical practice. And, and obviously, you see them uh, on your left as you look at the screen. Uh, essentially, email, electronic records, which Bob Washter is going to be talking about a lot, uh, video conferencing, web-based apps and, and apps on the phone. So these are all well proven. There's a whole range of other emergent technologies, some of which I'll talk about in a minute. But, but the proven base technologies, quite honestly, any practitioner in this country should be using um, and should be using with their patients to provide the highest quality care possible. Now that's another example. I mentioned Kaiser and I'm going to mention the VA. Um, the VA does an astonishing number of video visits has created some fabulous apps, um, and has also changed the national licensing system to allow people to work across state boundaries. Um, so the VA has been a huge leader uh, in the whole area of virtual care. And, and a recent evaluation from the National Academies of Medicine of their mental health services basically showed that they provide as good mental health care as any other system in the country, and for specific veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder and the like, probably better care. Uh, and so um, this is an example, again, of a system that has really taken up virtual care and become a world leader. Now, the ATA, as it goes forward, is increasingly going to be collaborating with big systems like this. And, and here are a couple of examples of recent guidelines that the ATA has put out. And I mention these because they're both examples of really good collaborations. Um, the, the pediatric telehealth one last year uh, was uh, produced, obviously, with the appropriate professional society. The, the recent mental health guidelines uh, that, uh, that Jay Shaw drove um, have been actually a collaboration between the American Psychiatric Association and the ATA. And this is a model for how we can work in the future. We don't have to nowadays do everything ourselves. We need to work with the other professional societies, the other colleges, to develop the standards and guidelines um, that, uh, that we need for our everyday practice. So the second part of the strategic plan is, is all about empowering and leading the accelerating industry. And I'm going to show you some brief examples here. The first is that we're moving into a world of increasing the asynchronous care where we capture data and then we add value to it by changing it or by analyzing it. And, and this is something that uh, is increasingly happening. Um, and we need to start thinking of video as data, not just data as being written or, or, or numeric information. Because we can get a huge amount out of video if we then analyze uh, recorded videos more. We're going to use a whole lot of techniques from artificial intelligence. Um, machine learning, uh, and a number of different uh, algorithmically based uh, systems. Um, cognitive robotics is a fascinating area that we should all look at. And the aim of this, again, is to do better care, to improve and customize patient care for all of our patients. Now, two or three areas where I think the ATA really needs to focus on and has been focusing on. The first is the opioid epidemic. Clearly, this is a national tragedy. Um, but the use of virtual care technologies is really a potential answer for a lot of the patients who are uh, being very distressed uh, with, with these types of disorders. And the, uh, the, the uh, ATA has been working hard at a policy level to try and reduce some of the regulations and actually prevent us currently prescribing controlled substances, for instance, to be able to spread our skills further. Another area of great importance is actually all about clinician well-being. Uh, it's amazing how many uh, clinicians really like practicing online. I find it actually less stressful to see patients online than I do in person. 
Um, and there are a whole lot of tips and techniques you can use to actually make life easier. So we know that, for instance, in, in America, 400 physicians a year suicide. We know that many other health professionals suffer from burnout and depression and anxiety. My perspective is that if we could, in fact, get more and more physicians working intelligently in a hybrid manner using virtual health technologies, that a lot of our practice would actually become both more interesting and less stressful. And I think we need to look at this very seriously. Um, people have talked about the ACA's three major foci of being lower costs, improved patient care, and better outcomes. I'm one of those people who believes that there should be a fourth leg of that stool called clinician wellness. And I think we can really look at that. And finally, climate change. We've obviously had a year when we've had a number of, of terrible sort of uh, meteorological disasters. The ATA set up a disaster release center. A lot of uh, our members have been involved in assisting in this area, and we've had a couple of working groups uh, on looking at this topic over the past year. We need to get more involved uh, in this particular area and start thinking in advance of how can we use the various virtual care technologies to reduce the impact of, of climate change. So moving on just finally to, I guess, the sort of, uh, the sort of money and, and future development uh, component of, of uh, telemedicine and virtual care. There is a huge amount of money going into digital health at the moment. Uh, just today, uh, one of our members announced that they'd, they'd received an extra 47 million in, uh, in venture funding. Um, the global market has been estimated around 16 billion, and a, and a lot of that market comes to our members and to the telemedicine field. There are a number of areas where, where uh, telemedicine is growing, and several recent really good reports about this. Um, but essentially, the bottom line is, is that uh, we now know that 75% of hospitals or health systems are using or intending to use these technologies. We know that telestroke and tele-ICU are, are currently really referred to as a standard of care in those disciplines. Um, we know that mobile apps are being widely quoted as being you know, the next frontier, and the VA is a good example of that. Um, and that value-based payments, which is clearly where the US is going, are going to increasingly drive the adoption. And finally, two big areas um, where, if, if anyone's looking for, for areas to work in, uh, I would strongly suggest you go look, look, at, look for patients who, who need chronic disease management or behavioral health. These are both areas where literally the market is exploding at the moment. So what's the future of ATA and then how do we integrate all of this knowledge um, and our experience and our skills and, and our collegiality into helping patients, helping the healthcare systems? I think we have to focus on solutions. Uh, we have to focus on collaborating. We have to look very strongly at value. Um, and ultimately, we have to search for better care and better ways of do things. Now, that doesn't mean to say in any way that we should reduce our interest in access and, and, and getting to underserved communities and, and uh, people in difficult situations. But I think we're now very much mainstreamed. And so what I want you to do over the next few days is to think about this message Talk to the, the people in the booths, talk to your colleagues, go home, spread the word, talk about the fact that virtual care is clearly the way of the future and is something that we all need to promote as clear experts in that area. So I want to welcome you to this uh, association meeting. It's our 25th. It's amazing to be here in Chicago. We've come a long way and we've still got a long way to go. Thank you very much.